2D Design is a great piece of software because not only can we use it to produce drawings, but we can also create things that we laser cut. In this video, we're going to draw a house. Now, in reality, in DT, you wouldn't normally design houses. However, it does teach you about a lot of the basic tools that you'll need going forwards when you design other things. So, on the right of the screen, you'll notice that grid lock is switched on, and this helps us get things nice and even. Then, on the left, I've selected the straight line tool. You click once to start the line, move it to where you want it to finish, then click again. Another useful tool on the left hand side of the screen that you'll see me select now is the shapes tool. Now it's set to draw rectangles at the moment. You click once to start the rectangle, move it to where you want the rectangle to finish, then click again. To delete an object, just select Del Any on the left of the screen, then click on it and it'll go. Now, if you want the object to come back, you'll see on the right of the screen, there's an undo last, and that will undo the last step that you did. If you want to delete part of a line or part of an object, Click and hold down on Del Any and then select the next one along the Delete Intersection tool. And this will get rid of lines up until where they meet another line. In other words, it doesn't delete the whole object. Right, let's get on to drawing the house then. So I'll select the Shapes tool and I'll click once to start the rectangle for the main part of the house. Move it, then click again to finish it. And I'll do the same with the garage on the side. Then similarly, I'll draw the outline of the garage door. I'll use a straight line tool to draw some slats across the garage door so that it adds a bit more detail. Carrying on with the straight line tool, I'll start to draw the outline for the roof. Now, one of the good things here about 2D design and grid lock is that you can get those angles absolutely spot on and perfect. We'll draw the lines going across. Now, I've deliberately drawn those longer than they need to be, then trimmed them back with the delete intersect tool and I'll add some tiles on now too. Please notice how we offset the tiles against each other. In other words, all those vertical lines don't line up. Next, we'll select the Shapes tool and we'll draw some windows. Again, notice the beauty of Gridlock in helping us get things in the right place and the right sizes and proportions. And we will also add a front door and a chimney. In 2D design, there are many different ways to zoom in. Personally, I think the most useful is the magnifying glass on the left-hand side that you've seen me use. You draw a box around the area you want to zoom in on, and to zoom out again, you can press the media button on the right-hand side. Now, I've zoomed in on the front door because I want to add some detail. I'm going to draw a letterbox. The problem is, you'll see there, is that gridlock is on, therefore the letterbox becomes massive. So if you look where I've just switched step lock on instead, and that allows you to move in smaller increments, therefore you can draw more detailed and delicate things. So I've used the rectangle to draw the letterbox, and I've used the circle tool in order to draw a door handle. And the next thing I'm going to do is use the text tool that says ABC, click on my page to type in a house number, click on OK, and it puts it there. Now, obviously that's too big and it's in the wrong position. So you'll see that I use something called the Select tool. That's the arrow in the top left of the screen. What that allows you to do is click on an object, select it, and then you can change it. So you can change its size, you can change its color, you can move it around the screen. Now, if you select one of the squares around the outside, once you've selected the object, click, move it to the size you want it, then click again and it'll resize it. And then you use square in the middle to change the position and move things around. And you can also use the select tool to click on things like the door handle to fill it in. You select it, click on fill at the top of the screen, select solid fill and then whatever color you want. And I find the best way of zooming out to the full page again is to click on media on the right hand side. So the last thing I'm going to do in this video is add some smoke coming out of the chimney. So use the magnifying glass on the left again to zoom in on the chimney area. And because smoke is random and irregular, I'm going to turn off both grid lock and step lock because this will allow me to draw just different sizes randomly, you see, and it'll look more realistic as smoke. Uh, using the circle tool, you just click and drag 
Uh, you have to click once to start the circle again to finish the circle and just draw a few circles there. Now to fill the smoke in, you can select it like I did there. Click on solid fill, choose a color. I've gone for gray, click OK, then OK. That fills in one smoke particle. However, if you click and drag, in other words, keep the mouse button down whilst you are selecting and draw a box around it, it will select multiple objects. So it selects all of the smoke and this allows you to then go on fill, solid fill and choose the gray color and you can do them all at once. And that makes it a lot quicker. Right, I hope you've enjoyed it. Draw a nice house. <laughs>